We've gotten a lot out of season 1 of The Sandman, Dream losing and then regaining his powers, a diner episode that will linger in your mind long after the Netflix autoplay, a whole thing about a vortex, her brother, and the missing sentient parts of the dreaming that swirl around her. Suffice it to say, there's a lot of details to keep track of, even if you did read the comics. One can hardly blame Netflix or Neil Gaiman, who were just so excited to have finally realized this world after three or so decades of development hell, and not the kind with Gwendolyn Christie overlooking it, unfortunately. But with season 1 ending so deliciously, it feels like it's a good time to double check, did I get everything the Sandman was trying to explain to me? Why does Desire want to get Dream to spill family blood? What's so bad about that? Image, Netflix's Dream learns in the final moments of season 1, Rose Walker's whole existence is predicated on Desire having impregnated Unity while she was asleep during Dream's absence. He is, of course, less than pleased to hear this, accusing Desire of meddling in an attempt to get Dream to spill family blood, either through attacking Desire or killing Rose Walker, who would technically also share family blood with Dream. This time it almost worked. Desire purrs. Oh, poor Dream. I really got under your skin this time, didn't I? Next time. I'll draw blood. In episode 10, or even the full season, we don't get a sense of what's so taboo about it. But as Dream warns Desire not to step to him, we get a sense that there's more than just a family rule about it, as he alludes to all that would entail. Ed. Note, book explanation below, don't read it if you don't want to know. In the comics, the Endless have a handful of rules handed down to them, just as ancient as themselves. One of them is to not spill family blood, or else bad news will befall you, namely you summon the Furies, who are no joke and will be mad. What is Lucifer's plan?